Well, 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 how's it going out there today, boys and girls of Sporty Land? This is the Sporting Trash Talk Nation. With yours truly, JPC, and as always, the home of the Common Joe and the Common Sally in the know. Even more so than, that's right, those media talking heads. Now let's get right to it. We've got some breaking news. Gus Malzahn and the Gus bus has run aground. It has finally burnt the hell down. So, got to jump in here real quick and give my opinions on that. Before I do that, I'd like to ask you guys and gals to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Subscriptions are most important. They keep me up and going. And in the good graces of YouTube, and most importantly, it's free. Them subscriptions are free. All that fun, free. So, let's get right to it. Gus. <laughs> I've been saying this for a couple of years now. I've even seen the writing on the wall where Gus has just been pulling it out by the thread of a needle. The skin of his teeth. There's many, many, many analogies that I could describe Gus with. But, I've had a sort of, not really a change of heart, but I've something has come to me, an epiphany that... Maybe Auburn might have made a mistake by letting Gus go. Probably not, but there is an argument here for Gus to have stayed at Auburn. Now, you could feel the tensions rising between him and the administration and a lot of the, of the Auburn uh, boosters and fans and whatnot, but these Auburn fans have been saying for the longest that they didn't expect national championships out of their coach. They didn't expect even SEC titles every year. They just wanted to compete with Alabama every year. Well, let's think about this. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't Gus beat Alabama three times since he's been here? Ain't he like three and five or three and four against Alabama? That's about as good as you can get. But the Auburn fans who say they are satisfied with uh, just competing with Alabama are obviously lying. Obviously, deep in the back of their minds, they do want more. They want to be Alabama, just like a lot of teams in the SEC want to be the University of Alabama. Well, as a college football historian and, and connoisseur here, I'm telling you now, that's going to be a hard thing to do. It's just like with any traditional program that's been doing it for over 100 years, you've got a lot of catching up to do. Let's take Clemson, for example. Clemson has made itself very relevant and probably almost on the stage with the bigger names in college football. They won a national championship in 1981, then went a long period of time without contending for a national championship. They brought in Dabo Swinney. People think, well, Dabo's a great coach. Well, he wasn't always a great coach. People think he just started winning national championships. People that don't know... Dabo hadn't been at Clemson just four or five years. He's been here since the early part of the decade. No head coaching experience, just a stab-in-the-dark kind of hire. Clemson got lucky. They struck, all, they struck gold or oil or whatever analogy you want to use on that. And the thing is, with Dabo Sweeney, he didn't win at first. He was going 8-4, uh, and 9-3, and three, stuff like that every year to start his college football career. Even lost... Uh, his in-state rival, South Carolina, three or four years in a row. But they were patient because they was like, hey, it's better than what we had. We weren't going to bowl games every year. We go to bowl here and there sporadically. Now we're contending. Let's be satisfied with contending, and then maybe after the coach gets his feet wet and gets his program set, maybe he'll win a national championship. Maybe won't. Gene Chizik won a national championship at Auburn and was still fired. A lot of people contribute that to the fact that people give Gus Malzahn and Cam Newton all the credit. And it was probably just Cam Newton because it wasn't Gus. As you can see now, Gus got his shot and Gus has now been dismissed from the University of Auburn. I know they like to be calling Auburn University, but get over it. But anyway... The thing is with, with Auburn, not just Auburn, but all these other SEC schools that are trying to be Alabama, that's your problem. Just be yourself. As the old uh, cliche goes, just be yourself and be satisfied with being good at just being yourself and being your university and your own tradition. Don't try to be Alabama. Don't try to be Ohio State 
or Notre Dame or USC or any of those traditions. Be yourself. Make your own way like Clemson did. Okay? Because I'm here to tell you now, <laughs> you can be a lot worse, Auburn. Just look at Tennessee. Just look at other other numerous programs that have went by the wayside. Um, USC's been having a lot of problems um, because they weren't satisfied with just contending for their conference championships. And that should be the main thing with teams. National championships and dynasties are, are, are something that, that, that just don't come around all the time. This thing that Alabama's in the midst of is just not normal. I mean, as a matter of fact, the team had never won a national championship five out of nine years until Alabama did it. So you don't need to be aspiring to that. Auburn fans, on the next coach that you hire, because you've already fired uh, poor old Gus, the next coach that you hire... Be satisfied with going to bowl games and be satisfied with maybe contending for the SEC title at first. Don't try to jump in and think, oh, we got to win national championships and we got to beat Alabama every year because that's just not going to happen because it's been going on for over 100 years with Alabama and other numerous traditional programs like Oklahoma, uh, Notre Dame, USC, like the ones I just mentioned. Although Alabama's hogging up the spotlight a little bit right now. Everything goes in cycles. Eventually, Alabama will have a lull, maybe. But even if they don't have a lull, you need to quit expecting that your coach is going to come in and just completely dominate your cross-state rival or your rival or whoever, whatever team it is that you really have an axe to grind with. Like with Auburn, it's Alabama. Try to contend for, you know, mid to high range bowls and the SEC title. If you can do that, if you can stay within your own skin and try to build your own tradition in a Clemson type way, I think the University of Auburn will be a lot better off. And you'll be a lot happier because you're no longer trying to compare yourself to Alabama all the time. I know this is never going to happen. They're going to continue to do it. But that's the only way that you're going to truly be able to compete and be satisfied with yourself is to be realistic in your expectations of this next head football coach. You guys and gals tell me whether I'm right or wrong and what you think Auburn should do and who you think they should go after. There's numerous names out there that they could go after. Billy Napier of Louisiana pops to my head at first. He's an up-and-comer. Um, maybe, maybe he can go the Ole Miss route again like he did with Tommy Tuberville and steal Lane Kiffin away. Um, they got the resources and, and, and the money to, to go out and get them a decent coach. But them the just first the first two that popped to mind, Billy Napier, Lane Kiffin, um, maybe the guy at Iowa State. Um, he went to Iowa State route too, didn't they, with Gene Chiswick. Matt Campbell. Those are just three names that popped to my head. But you guys and gals give me your take on this. And, as always, before I leave, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. It'll let you know when I'm up and on the air. Like, share, and comment. And, as always, KMCA <laughs> to all the other teams. <laughs>